Hello friends, this video on why do we fall ill part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have discussed about the types of cause of a disease, let us talk about two different categories of diseases that is infectious disease and non-infectious disease. So let us see what are they. So what first we will discuss about the infectious disease. Diseases for which microbes are the immediate cause. So what are microbes? Microbes are nothing but the microorganisms. The organisms which are small enough to be seen with our naked eye. So they are known as microorganisms or microbes. So here in this lesson mostly we will be using the word microbes for them. So the diseases for which microbes are the immediate cause. That means the first cause responsible for the diseases are the microbes like bacteria, fungi, viruses, protozoa or some small worms. Right? So they are the first cause of the disease. Now in such diseases infection can spread from one person to another. This is very very important. So that is why these diseases are known as infectious disease because it can spread from one person to another. So you would have seen that there are many such diseases which if happens to one of your family members it keeps happening to all of them turn by turn. Right? That's because the infection keeps spreading from one person to another. Let us take this example. Let us suppose that this small girl is suffering from cold. She caught cold and she is sneezing, she is coughing all the time. Right? Now if this little girl comes near her and she spends a lot of time with this girl, what happens? The infection tends to reach this girl. So the infection tends to get transferred from the infected girl to the healthy girl and the healthy girl also gets cold. It happens with most of us generally, right? Now the question is how do the microbes enter from the infected person to the healthy person? How did it enter from first girl to the second girl? Now that again depends. There are many ways by which the microbes can get transferred from one person to another. So we will talk about the various ways by which they get transferred from one to another person. So we will talk about that in one of our next slide. But for now you should understand that these kind of diseases get I mean the microbes actually since they are caused by microorganisms and these microorganisms can get transferred from one person to another and that is why these diseases can also spread from one person to another. So who, who are the infectious agents here? Microbes are known as the infectious agents because they are responsible for spreading the infection. So that is why they are called infectious agents also termed as communicable or contagious diseases communicable disease because why it is called communicable because it can be communicated from one person to another that is why they are called communicable disease or contagious disease because contagious again means the same that means it can transfer from one to another person so let us look at some of the examples of infectious diseases flu you would have seen that when there is a season change, right? Like suppose extremely hot weather was there and suddenly the weather became cold. Most of the people tend to get catch cold and they get fever, slight fever with little cough and cold. So that is called flu. So that flu is a um, I mean fever which lasts for around two to three days and it happens to everybody because it is communicable. So when someone sneezes or when someone coughs, other persons who are nearby they also tend to catch the same infection so flu common common cold cough measles these are some of the examples of infectious diseases now if you look at these diseases all of them spread from one person to another person right okay now on the other hand what are non-infectious diseases diseases for which microbes are not the immediate cause so microbes are not the cause of these diseases right i have also spoken about these kind of diseases in one of our previous slides right so it does not spread from one person to another so if microorganisms are the cause in that case there is a possibility that the same microorganism can get transferred to other person now if it is not at all the cause in that case they cannot spread to some other person 
So what are the causes in these diseases? They are internal non-infectious causes. So some internal causes, maybe the cause is related to internal of the body of a person. So let us look at examples, cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure. These are some of the examples of uh, non-infectious diseases. So if you see if somebody is suffering from cancer, if you come near that person or if you stay with that person, you touch that person, you will not get infected because the cause of cancer is something related to the gene. So something which is related to the inside of your body alone and it cannot be transmitted to somebody else. Right? Similarly, if you talk of diabetes, it is because of the level of sugar inside your body is more. So it, it, there is no way that it can get communicated. The sugar cannot get transferred from your body to somebody else's body. Right? Similarly, blood pressure. So blood pressure again is something which is related to, um, as I said, heredity, tension, stress, improper food intake. So these kind of diseases cannot spread from one person to another person because their causes are internal and non-infectious disease. So that is why these diseases are often known as non-communicable diseases or non-contagious diseases. Now let us talk about the infectious agents in detail. Now in this lesson, lesson we will uh, give more attention to the infectious diseases. So we will talk more and more about all the infectious diseases, how the infection actually take place, how the infectious agents, what are the infectious agents, what all diseases do they cause, how they enter our body, how can we get rid of them or how can we kill them. So we will talk all about that. So what are the infectious agents we spoke about in the last few slides? The infectious agents are the microbes, right? So many categories of microbes can act as infectious agents like viruses, bacteria, fungi, protozoa and worms. These are the categories of microorganisms which can act as infectious agents. So here you can see that some of them are unicellular, some of them like worms are multicellular as well. So they can be unicellular or multicellular organisms and they act as the agents who spread infection. So now let us look at the diseases which are caused by different infectious agents. So what all diseases each of these infectious agents give rise to. Now you must be wondering why do we need to know all this? Okay fine. These are the diseases which we normally suffer from. Why do we need to know which organism caused that disease? We need to know that because if we have the knowledge of the organism which caused that disease, it helps us to treat or to cure that disease. Now, how does it help in the treatment? We will talk about that in, in one of the slides which is going to come soon. So in this slide, we will talk about the diseases which are caused by each of the different infectious agents. So let us first talk about viruses. Now, some of the diseases caused by viruses are common cold, influenza, dengue, AIDS. These are some of the viral infections. Now, common cold is something which you would have seen. Like you will sneeze, you will have a, a flowy nose. Now, you might also have little fever at certain times. Right? So, influenza is also similar to that. Dengue. Dengue fever is something which has become very deadly these days. Sometimes uh, it becomes so dangerous that it can prove fatal to the human beings, right? So this dengue fever is also caused by when a mosquito bites you, right? Now the mosquito bites you, what happens? It actually injects the virus which causes dengue inside your body and that is how you catch dengue. Then AIDS, what is AIDS? AIDS is Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. So AIDS is the short form. It, the full form is Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. So AIDS is again a disease which is caused by a virus. Now in this case, how the virus generally enters our body. So mostly in AIDS, the virus enters our body either through sexual activity, through the sexual organs, or sometimes it also enters our body through blood transfusion. Maybe if the same needle is, if, if there is a person who is suffering from AIDS, if, and if there is another healthy person, if the same needle to uh, take out blood from the body of the person is being used in both the cases that can often 
uh, cause uh, transfer the virus from the affected person to the healthy person right so these are some of the diseases which are caused by virus next let us look at the diseases caused by bacteria now here you can see many different bacteria in many different shapes right that's because we have spoken right bacteria come in a variety of shapes and si sizes some are spherical some are uh, elongated tube like structures so they come in a variety of shapes and sizes so the diseases caused by bacteria are typhoid cholera tuberculosis and anthrax these are some of the diseases so when i talk of typhoid what happens generally in typhoid these are some of the common names right typhoid cholera you would have heard it in people so what happens in typhoid you generally have fever uh, you have lot of weakness and generally typhoid happens through food or water intake i means when when the bacteria enters your body through the food or the water which you take so that means you should take proper care that you are taking proper hygienic clean food and clean water right cholera when you talk of cholera what are the symptoms which you generally see watery diarrhea that means you will have loose motions to a very large extent vomiting is also seen and cholera also generally happens through water so uh, proper care should be taken to maintain cleanliness of drinking water tuberculosis now tuberculosis is often known as tb this disease is most commonly known as tb why is it called tb because it is caused by a specific type of bacteria whose scientific name is tuberobacillus so that t is for tubero and b is for bacillus right now as i am telling that these each of these diseases are caused by a specific species of bacteria because even inside bacteria you have many different types of bacteria now each of these diseases are caused by a specific type of bacteria right now at this level we are not going to get into that detail of each of these diseases in your higher classes that is in your 11th and 12th you we will again talk about these diseases but there we will talk about each of these diseases in detail which particular species of bacteria causes typhoid and how do we cure it we we will uh, learn about it in that detail that time so for now you should just know that bacteria causes all these diseases so what happens in tuberculosis or tb so here mainly the lungs get affected so mostly lungs are affected and the bacteria enters while breathing through your nose and that is why it directly affects the lungs again anthrax anthrax is a disease which is common in cattle but sometimes it also affects humans and it can be lethal it can be life taking let us look at the next set of infectious agents that is fungi they are responsible mostly for skin infections so many different kinds of infections or allergies on skin can happen because of fungi then is protozoa protozoa is responsible for malaria and kala azar so kala azar is nothing but black fever in malaria as well as kala azar both in both you have you get high fever with lot of shivering so you will see people who are suffering from malaria they generally whenever they get that when they were their body temperature goes high they start to shiver a lot worms these worms can also cause many diseases like stomach or intestine infection it can also cause elephantiasis what is elephantiasis now elephantiasis is a disease where uh, the skin becomes thickened the skin becomes so thick and also the tissue below the skin becomes very thick that your leg and it mostly happens near your leg and as a result the leg swells up badly so the leg becomes very fat and very swollen up and that is why this disease is known as elephantiasis right so this is also caused by worms and worms also cause stomach and intestine infection it enters our body through the food which we eat and that is why it is always advised that before cooking the green vegetables they should be cleaned properly they should be washed properly they should be boiled so that even if there are any worms when you boil them the worms are dead so they do not harm you right so things before cooking and that is why we cook food and eat because when we cook food the germs which are present inside the food they get killed because when when we cook it we are actually boiling it at a very high temperature 
right so that is how worms can also cause infection inside our stomach or intestine so here we saw some of the diseases which are caused by the different type of infectious agents right thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again